If I told you that Synology Drive was the one application that I can't live without, you probably wouldn't believe me. But I'm gonna tell you why in this video. But before we get to that point, I wanna explain what Synology Drive is, how you could set it up, some of its advanced features, and then we'll get to why I consider it to be my favorite application. So let's take a look at what Synology Drive is. Synology Drive is a private cloud. What that means is that all of your files will live on the Synology NAS and they'll be accessible from your other devices. Synology Drive can be compared to tools like Google Drive, Microsoft's OneDrive, or Dropbox. The only difference is that central location will exist on your NAS as opposed to in the cloud. Now, after you set up all of the Synology Drive clients and everything, which we'll take a look at a little later in this video, when you create a file on one of your devices, it will automatically sync from that device to your NAS and it'll be accessible on all of your other devices. So that central hub will be your NAS. At that point, it makes things like getting a new computer or simply accessing your files on a different device easy because they'll automatically sync to that device and they'll be accessible no matter where you are. Now, in order to get to that point, we have to actually set up Synology Drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly switch over to DSM, we're gonna set it up, we're gonna take a look at the client setup, and then we'll move on from there. So we're gonna walk through the setup process pretty quickly, but in the description, I have written instructions that you can follow, which will walk through the entire process from setting up the admin console to setting up individual clients and even more advanced features like on-demand sync. So that is in the description of the video and you can follow along there. So the point we're at here is that the Synology Drive application is installed in DSM. If you haven't done that, just open up the package center, search for Synology Drive and you can install it there. As soon as you launch the tool, you're gonna to be brought to the admin console. You have to make sure you access the admin console and then you'll be able to manage all of your drives and all of your team folders. And we'll quickly walk through all of the important settings here. Now, inside of the team folder location, you're gonna have different shared folders. The shared folders that are listed here will have to be enabled if you wanna be able to access them from Synology Drive clients. So the first one and arguably the most important one is the My Drive section. The My Drive section uses a user's home folder. If you don't know how the home folder works, it basically allows each individual user on your NAS to actually have a location where their personal files can be stored. So it's a little confusing inside of DSM because if you open DSM, uh, I'm sorry, if you open File Station as an admin, you'll see a home folder and a homes with an S folder. The homes folder with an S will have individual usernames inside of it and if you expand those folders, it will be all of their personal files. The home folder will be the home folder for that specific user that you're currently logged into. So you can kind of ignore that for this video, but it's important to know the difference. And if you were to access the home folder, and then you were to look at the user account that you're currently logged in as, and the files inside of that, the files will match because they are the same. Now the My Drive section requires that the user home service be currently set up and activated. In the written instructions, I have exactly how you can do that, but the idea is that if you enable it, if you currently don't have it enabled, if you enable it, it'll walk you through the process of enabling that. But as soon as that's enabled, you'll be able to go in and enable the My Drive. So team folders are slightly different. When you go in and you create a shared folder in DSM, those shared folders will be part of this list here. So all the shared folders will have an individual entry in this list. From there, you can enable them. If you enable them, the team folders will be accessible to users that have permission to that shared folder from inside of the Synology Drive client. So the important thing to note there is one, the user must have permission to it, and two, you'll be able to access it from the Synology Drive client. So the versions are very important. So if you think of a Word file, for example, if you go through and make 10 different changes to it and you have 10 different saves, you'll be able to go back and restore any of those versions from inside of Synology Drive. In terms of the correct number of versions, it's really up to you. There's not necessarily a right or wrong answer but it might depend on the type of content that you're actually storing there. So if you're storing documents, you might want 30 versions, but if you're storing video files, you might not need that many. So from a version perspective, each team folder or the My Drive folder can have different version settings. As soon as you enable those team folders, you'll be able to go inside of the Synology Drive web client and you'll be able to see all of them from the web client right away. However, the power really exists when you can sync those files from a Synology Drive client, either on Windows or Mac OS, and you'll be able to set up different folders that will sync from your NAS to folders on your device. 
And that's what we're gonna take a look at now is the Synology Drive client setup. So I wanna be clear that if you don't wanna set up the Synology Drive client, you don't have to. You can access it through a web browser. You can go through and view all of your files from a web browser and it'll all function as expected. However, the Synology Drive client works very well. There's some pretty advanced functionality with it and that's what we're gonna take a look at now. So from a setup perspective, I'm gonna assume that you went through and downloaded and installed the actual client. And as soon as you launch it, you're gonna to have to connect to your NAS. So all that really involves is going through, entering in the IP address and entering in a user account. And as soon as you do that, you'll be brought to the sync task settings. Now it's important to note that the user account that you log in as will be the user account that this actual client connects with. So if you have a specific team folder that you wanna access, you have to make sure that the user account you're logging in as has permission to the shared folder. So the next section is gonna bring you to two different options. You're gonna have a sync task option and you're gonna have a backup option. We'll take a look quickly at the backup option later, but we're gonna look and focus on the sync task at this point. So the sync task, the way that it works is it will sync a folder on your local device to a folder on your Synology NAS. Now we're looking at this from a Windows client perspective. The Mac OS client is slightly different. And in the written instructions, I have exactly how the Mac OS client works because we're gonna be focusing in a second here on on-demand sync. And the on-demand sync process on Mac OS is different than it is on Windows. So just keep that in mind, but overall for the most part, the idea is the same. So the top section is gonna be the folder on your NAS that you wanna sync with a folder on your device. So that's either gonna be the My Drive folder or it's gonna be a team folder. You have to go through and you have to select one or the other. The folder location on your computer is gonna be the folder that you want to sync on this individual device. So as soon as you set this up, the folder on your local device that you select here will basically be a mirror of everything on your NAS. Anytime something changes on your NAS, it will automatically sync down to your device, or anytime anything changes on your device, it will automatically sync up to your NAS. Now, right underneath that inside of Windows is on-demand sync. Now, for the majority of people, you want to use this. There are unique cases where you don't, but after you see how on-demand sync works, you can make the decision for yourself. On-demand sync allows you to go through and keep files on your NAS but have a link to them on your individual device. So let's assume that you have a video file on your NAS and it's, I don't know, 10 gigabytes. And you don't really use that very frequently, you don't view it, but you'd like to be able to store it in an individual folder and access it if you need to. On-demand sync allows you to basically keep a reference to it on your device and when you double click it, it will automatically download from your NAS to your local device. It works both ways, meaning that if the file exists on your local device and you'd rather not store it on your local device because you don't wanna consume the space, you can free up the local space and it will automatically sync to your NAS. And at that point, you can then always download it at a later time. On-demand sync is huge because it allows you to really have and access all of the files on your NAS while not actually consuming any of the storage space that it needs. This allows you to go through and keep what you're currently working on on your local device and everything else can stay on your NAS. There is some advanced functionality with on-demand sync like pinning copies. So if you did wanna keep an individual file on your device at all times and anytime it changes, automatically download those changes, you can pin a local copy and that'll basically function the way that Synology Drive functions without on-demand sync. So you'll always have an updated copy on your local device. You can make the decision on if you wanna use on-demand sync or if you don't based on the data that you're actually gonna be syncing. There is some advanced functionality that you can access by selecting the advanced tab and you can go through and determine what type of syncing you want. So if you only wanna upload your changes or you only wanna download changes from the NAS, you can set it up that way. But two-way sync is probably what most people are gonna use. Now, one thing I wanna quickly point out is that when you're selecting a folder on your local device, there's an option to create an empty Synology Drive folder. You either wanna enable that or you wanna disable it, but the functionality will greatly differ based on which option you select. So for example, if you're syncing all of your documents, let's say your Windows Documents folder with your Synology NAS, and you want your Documents folder to be in sync with the My Drive on your NAS, you wanna uncheck this option. If you keep the option checked, what it does is it creates a Synology Drive folder inside of that Documents folder. 
And at that point, only the contents of that Synology Drive folder will then sync with your NAS. So that's a very important option that you have to really think through on how you wanna actually utilize this. So after you complete this setup, at that point, the sync task will exist. So what that means is like I said earlier, your Synology NAS is really gonna be the central location of all of your files. Anytime you change anything on this individual device inside of that folder, it will automatically sync up to your NAS. It'll be accessible from the web client, it'll be accessible from your phone if you're using the Android or the iOS application, and it'll be accessible on any other devices that you're using as well. Now you just set up your first sync task, but it's important to remember that you can create multiple sync tasks. So what I mean by that is if you have an individual My Drive sync task, you can go through and set up team folders as well. Or if you set up one team folder, you can set up multiple team folders. You really have to determine what folders you wanna sync on your NAS with your PC. So now that we set up our sync tasks, we'll quickly look at a backup task. But I wanna be clear that a backup task in Synology Drive will function the exact same way as a sync task functions. It's just that it's gonna sync your entire C drive or for Mac, it's gonna sync your entire device. Now, the reason I keep saying sync is because it's syncing the files. It is not a true backup. A sync is not necessarily a backup. The reason I say it's not really a backup is because you have to utilize other tools to get backup functionality. So for example, if you're syncing your entire drive to your Synology NAS, you really should probably set up snapshots and you'll probably wanna set up backups as well. So at that point, you'll have a full suite of tools where you can go through and you can actually restore an entire folder in case you're hit with something like a ransomware attack because a sync job will go through and sync anything. So if you're hit with a ransomware attack and an entire folder is encrypted, for example, those encrypted files will sync to your NAS. So the latest version on your NAS is gonna be that encrypted version. Now, I don't personally use the backup feature inside of Synology Drive, but that doesn't mean that you can't. There are three different options that you could select if you decide to use this. You can do a continuous backup, you can do a manual backup, or you can do a scheduled backup. And overall, they function similarly. It just really means that the data will sync based on whatever you specify. But the idea is the same. You'll be able to go through and you'll be able to automatically sync all of your files from your device to your NAS. So that's the server setup and that's the client setup. We're quickly gonna take a look at some advanced features and I'm using that term very loosely. These aren't necessarily advanced features, but there's some cool things that you can use as soon as you implement Synology Drive. The first thing that we're gonna take a look at is versions. So as we discussed earlier, every single time you save a file, you'll actually have a version of that file. So if you have to go back and restore one of the previous versions, you can either do that from inside of the Synology Drive web client, or you can do it from inside of the actual Windows or Mac OS client as well. The process is slightly different, but the idea is the same. You'll be able to go back to a previous version and restore it. The second thing is file sharing. Now, if you're using something like Synology Quick Connect, you'll actually get a link that anybody in the world can access if you send them that link. Now, if you're not using Synology Quick Connect, you'll have to go through and use an alternative option. We're gonna look in a later video at different ways that you can access your NAS remotely, but for the most part, you probably shouldn't configure port forwarding. That's for a different video. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that but people have used reverse proxies and they've been successful with that. So the choice is really yours, but Synology Quick Connect is probably gonna be the easiest. If you don't wanna use Synology Quick Connect and you're only looking to share files internally, meaning on your local network, you can just grab a link to any individual file and send it to somebody else on your local network and they'll be able to access it there. So now that we looked at most of what Synology Drive has to offer, I'm gonna tell you why I prefer it over other options. Prior to Synology Drive, I used Google Drive and Google Drive worked well, but I didn't really use it mostly because of the costs associated with it. I didn't wanna go through, I think I had, it was like 15 gigabytes or something. And for the most part, I couldn't sync my entire documents folder with Google Drive. So what it really was used for was anytime I was working on a file that I wanted to be able to access outside of my local network, I would sync it with Google Drive. It worked well. However, I quickly hit the data cap. And as soon as I hit the data cap, I realized I either have to pay to get more data storage or I have to kind of stop using this. So I stopped using it. Then years later, I started using Synology Drive and it was 
for my specific workflow way better than Google Drive ever was. What it allowed me to do is it allowed me to sync my documents folder up to my NAS on my drive. And then on every single device I had, my laptop, my phone, everything, I was able to access my files at all times. When I got a new device, rather than copying the files from my old device to my new device, I signed in with my Synology Drive client, and then I was able to sync them all automatically. That piece right there is really the highest praise that I can give Synology Drive. As soon as I get a new device, all I do is sign in with my new user account and all of my files will exist on my local device. That, while it seems small, is huge because in the past, I always had to pick and choose which specific documents I needed to send over and which were kind of older files that I didn't really need. But at this point, I just log in and all the files will automatically get synced. Now, the second reason is privacy. Now, I'm not one that's you know storing these super private documents. However, it is important to note that when you're using Synology Drive, privacy is a top reason that a lot of people use it. You store the file on your local device, it automatically syncs to your NAS, but everything is kept local. It never has to leave your local network if you don't want it to. So price and privacy are two of the biggest reasons. However, there's a third reason, and this is more of a personal reason. Overall, it just really works well. For my specific workflow, there are team folders that I set up that I'm not actually sharing with anybody else. It's not like I have a team that I'm working with. But what it allows me to do is it allows me to set up a shared folder on my NAS. It allows me to, to actually configure it as a team folder. And then on that device, I can go through and I can sync it to a different folder on whatever device I'm using. So for example, these YouTube videos, as soon as I went through and set everything up, I set up a new shared folder, which then allowed me to create it as a, a, a team folder, which then allowed me to sync it to my device. And now all of these video files that I'm working on are automatically synced to my PC that you see behind me and to my laptop. From a workflow perspective, I can work on either device and all of my files will be up to date. And if I change any of them on either device, it'll automatically sync to the other. The final reason is backups. Now, I'm pretty crazy with backups. I get it from my dad. But the reality is by using Synology Drive, it allows me to automate my backup process. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at my exact backup process. So if you wanna see that, be sure to subscribe. But the idea is that I can automatically back up these files without really having to do anything else. It also allows me to utilize different snapshot schedules. So for example, I might wanna take snapshots more or less frequently for a specific team folder than I do for my documents folder. All of these are the reasons why I've picked Synology Drive over Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, any of the other tools that we discussed in this video. Overall, it just works very well for my specific workflow and it allows me to keep my NAS at the core, which is really what I'm looking for. So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If not, I will see you next time.